Good morning. Welcome back to the channel. It's another fine, it's actually not too warm, not too hot today. Uh, cloudy day here in Eastern North Carolina. <laughs> uh, we might be getting rain soon and I kind of hope we do because uh, the plants could use it. Everything's still growing. Uh, and again, we don't start getting into the cooler 70s until October-ish. And then we don't get our first frost here in growing zone 8A probably until early to mid-November, depending upon, you know, a whole lot of other things and circumstances and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> All that being said, instead of doing a late, um, late season garden tour of the entire property, because not really much has changed since our last garden tour, I haven't added too much. I will give you a update or a tour here of the veg garden and what's going on because things are changing, things are happening. So let me uh, show you that now. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, click that bell icon to be notified when I do post up a new video. This way you get to see what new antics I'm up to uh, in the garden as it continues to grow and develop. What you see behind me are a bunch of raised beds and these are off to the side of the greenhouse. And one of my goals when I started planning or building this garden was to do these larger, uh, raised beds, these metal beds, they are a little pricey, but the upside is, is they will last easily 20 years. And they are at a height where I don't have to do a lot of bending over, which is good. So when I'm in my sixties and seventies, I won't have to be bending over too much to do weeding. Let me show you what is new amongst these beds. The newest bed we have here is this round one. And earlier in the year, I had purchased this one, which I had filled with some herbs. We'll get to that in a second. This one I recently just picked up on Gardener's Supply, and I'm in the process of filling it. There are some wood chips in the bottom, and right now there's a bunch of grass clippings because I mowed inside the vegetable garden yesterday. And I will continue to use more wood chips and continue to fill this. And then I will put in uh, raised bed mix, and I think I might try to grow carrots in this bed this year. I don't know, we'll see. Maybe something else, but fall crops uh, need to start getting in the ground. Here in this bed, of course, is the herb, uh, what, what I plan to be the herb bed. And it's sunk down quite a bit with the uh, wood chips rotting inside and compressing, which is fine. Uh, rosemary here doing very good. Haven't used any of it yet. Uh, not sure if I should take any and uh, try to dry it or freeze it. Uh, if you grow herbs and you dry or freeze or do whatever you do with them, please leave a comment below. Let me know what you do with your herbs. Uh, sage here. Uh, I wanted to see if I could grow sage. Obviously I can grow sage from seed and I have some more baby rosemary down here. And this over here is Greek oregano. Now last year I, I dried, uh, basil and, uh, I made a lot of that but I'm, I've never done oregano. Actually, this is, I'm sorry, over here is thyme. No, the thyme didn't grow. This is the thyme. Oops, sorry. This here is thyme. Hasn't really grown much. And this is the Greek oregano, and this is Greek oregano. But I haven't tried to dry or preserve any other herbs. So again, if you've done that before, please let me know. I think what I'm gonna do is next year, I may dig out and replant this bed with new stuff. The sage, I don't know if it will hold up to the frost or not. Again, we get very light frosts here, but we do get freezing temperatures. The rosemary, I know, will be fine, but I want basically want to top the bed a little. I want to bring the height of the bed up, so I need to put more raised bed mix in there. In this bed, we, my wife had a bunch of uh, sunflowers, little sunflowers. Deer got in here one night, they ate some of the sunflowers. A lot of the other flowers did bloom, they looked nice. But uh, she recently replanted this whole bed with beets, which is pretty cool. Here we have, uh, oh, uh, the name eludes me. It's a gourd, I believe. That's it, Right there's one right there, which is pretty cool. And I think you can make like birdhouses or something out of them in the future. You could also eat them, I guess, if you wanted to, but uh, she grew it just out of fun, see what would happen. I put up this little trellis for her. As you can see, it's doing pretty well. So that's cool. Over here, it's another one of uh, the beds that my wife is using. 
I can't remember what is in this first one. Black something or other. So that's, oh, it's a black tomato, I think. So only one seemed to come up, but that's doing well. And then she has a row of more beets, but I don't think these beets uh, are growing. We'll see. We'll keep uh, watering if need be, and uh, we'll go from there. Not sure what this one is. Let's see. Oh, this is ground cherries. So this is ground cherries. Now, she's planted some of these late, so I don't know what we're going to get out of them, but if we get anything, cool. If not, it's fun to look at. Lemon cucumber. So that's growing well. And this is another, this is a lemon squash. And it's going to grow up along the fence. And I don't know if we're going to get anything out of this, because again, it's a little late in the year, but we'll see. If we get a lemon squash, that'd be awesome. Uh, let me show you what's happening behind the greenhouse. So over here, where you see these three poles, this is going to be two gates. I have yet to make the gates, but this is how the deer got in. So what I did was I took these bamboo poles and I temporarily ran them through here and it's prevented the deer from getting in. Again, deer are fairly lazy. If they can reach it without hopping over any fences, they will. If they have to hop over a fence, they can't be bothered, at least not yet. Uh, the wood chips over here, uh, where I'm standing, there used to be a big pile of wood chips, but that went into filling the two beds that my wife is currently using. This pile of wood chips here will get whittled down and that will go into the round bed that I'm currently filling up. Whatever's left over will probably go into another bed, which I hope to put where basically where I'm standing now, right here. I'm hoping for my birthday, which is coming up in November, that uh, I get a, another uh, large bed to add to this row here. And that would be really cool. And then the, the rest of those wood chips would go and it's probably not enough to help fill up that bed, but I have more wood chips elsewhere on the property. So again, if you follow me, you know that I got a lot of wood chips and uh, I'll be using them to fill up these raised beds. Now this bed here, I have some sunflower. I believe it's a variety of types. There's some gaps. So I think I may have to turn around popping a few more seeds. And I think these guys will get taller and already you can see they're starting to put a bud on, focus. And uh, so hopefully I get some flowers out of this before the end of the season. And here I have, let's see, three, six, nine, nine bush lake, bush lake beans. Let's just call them bush lake beans since I uh, keep tripping over my tongue here. But I uh, mulched them over yesterday with some grass clippings. So again, we are supposed to get some more hot days. The temperature isn't supposed to be cooling off until probably October-ish. Uh, so yeah, so, and the grass clippings helps uh, maintain the water. It acts as a mulch. It helps keep the water in the soil. Now in this bed here, if you remember, I planted up a lot of uh, basil, as you can see. I think there's uh, four or five basil plants per side. This basil right here, is uh, sweet basil. And it is very heat tolerant, which is great. Uh, it is starting to put on some flowers here, so I will have to go around and uh, do a little uh, pulling off. I'll also probably try to uh, make some more pesto before the end of the year. Probably in the next few, and probably this week sometime, I'll make some more pesto. That's always good for dinner. And what I may even try to do this year is I may try to turn around and freeze a bunch of this. On this side, I have Genovese basil. Now this is also relatively heat tolerant, uh, although I have to keep fighting to keep it from going to flower. Once uh, basil starts going to flower, it changes the taste of the, uh, of the basil, and then it doesn't taste so great. So Genovese, uh, it's okay, it's okay but it doesn't last as long as the sweet. In between here, looking really raggedy and sorry and probably not going to uh, be here much longer, are cherry tomatoes. I had planted these very late, so I didn't expect them to do much. I think we've gotten a couple of cherry tomatoes off of them, but right now they look pretty, uh, pretty done. So I just may pull them out and uh, let the basil finish doing what it's doing before I pull out this bed empty out this bed, and then maybe I repurpose it for the winter. 
The front of the greenhouse, not much has changed. I have a dahlia in a pot, which I may try to get into the ground before the end of the year, or just let it finish doing its thing, cut it back, and then wait until next spring, and then put it into the ground. Uh, I have a rosemary, which I recently repotted in one of my videos. And then uh, there's this other dahlia, which has this lovely flower on it. Now these are red skin dahlias, in case you're asking. Uh, they sometimes produce yellow flowers, sometimes uh, sort of that mottled mix, uh, and other times a solid like red color. Two mums, which uh, I bought last year from Lowe's, I believe, and uh, had them in the pots over the winter, and they did their thing, and they, you know, it looks like they right now have a bunch of little buds on them. So that means they should be flowering soon, but I'd like to get them into bigger pots and put them on display on the uh, back deck there. Over on the potting bench here, not much has changed. I still have plants that I need to get into the ground and I will be putting some of these, like these Montauk daisies. They'll be going into the rose garden. Uh, I have a Japanese anemone, which I think I'll put into the garden by the driveway. Milkweed, which, well, I'm going to stick it in the uh, greenhouse for the winter and see what it does. And then I have some lemon grasses, which I probably won't use. I have this lovely uh, pink flower agastache. Uh, I believe it's called Heather Queen. So that really needs to get into the ground so it can root in before the winter. Uh, here's the lavender experiment. I did this in a recent video too. And right now, no new buds or anything to show, but that was only a week or so ago. And then some cana, which I also need to get into the ground. And in the back, right here, these are two crepe myrtles. And they're putting on these lovely pink flowers. I'm not sure where to put them still, but I think I might put one of them right back in this corner here. Now let me show you, for those of you who don't follow me on a regular basis or don't follow me on Instagram. Well, when the deer got in here one night, they wiped out my uh, pumpkin. <laughs> so I was planning on growing pumpkin. The pumpkins, the vines were doing quite well. They were growing out. They had some flowers. Life was good. And then the deer got in there and yeah. I have a bunch of sunflower seed. I'm going to try to stick it in the ground. I'll obviously pull out the pumpkin vines. I'll stick in the sunflower seed. And if I get sunflowers to grow before the frost, bonus. Be nice to have that like late late season splash of color before the uh, winter sets in. Over here in the bed next to the uh, pumpkin vines, I have a couple of watermelon. Actually, I have three. There's the other one. And uh, seems to be doing pretty well. I'm not 100% sure when these are supposed to be ready. This one and this one might be ready soonish. Not sure. Uh, these are supposed to get anywhere from 20 to 50 pounds, the rattlesnake watermelon. I'm not sure when they're supposed to be done. If you if you grow watermelon on a regular basis and or if you've grown this variety of watermelon before, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, for should, I, should I pull them? What am I looking for? I may wind up pulling one soon if you guys don't leave a comment. <laughs> and uh, worst case scenario, it won't be that sweet. The, this is the remainder of the sunflowers that my wife had growing here. She did cut uh, some of them out for flowers, for cut flowers, and some of them, oh, there's another watermelon. That one looks really good. That one might be ready or near ready. I'm not sure. Yeah, so the deer got in here, they made a mess. But one of the things I've noticed, and in fact, oh, this looks like, um, that's not an echinacea. Not sure what this is, but it's throwing on new growth. So we might get more flowers out of whatever that is. I don't think it's, it might be a zinnia. Not sure. My wife did plant a lot of zinnias in this bed here. Some of these uh, sunflowers, this is really interesting. Look at this guy. He threw on a new leaf and he's gonna open. But if you look down the rest of the stem, no leaves. And here's one where the deer totally ate everything off and it has some new leaves on it. So that still might be a viable plant. Others again, where the deer really decimated the plant, they've been throwing on new 
leaves and even if I can get the damn camera to focus, new buds. Sorry, I'm trying to get the camera to focus here. There you go, new buds. So we may get sunflowers out of these as well, which would be great. In fact, here's one. There you go, happy little sunflower. Now also because these got pretty decimated, I did plant some new sunflower seeds. So there's one right there. Here's another one right there. So hopefully I will get some, again, late, late season uh, sunflowers coming up, giving me some color, splash, that final splash of color before the winter time. Over here by the front gate in this grassy mess, which I have to get clean up, it's hard to get a mower in here. And the weed whacker, I have to get in here with the weed whacker. So yeah, but I have this passion flower uh, clematis. And it's slowly but surely growing up. In fact, all that's new growth right there, growing up this archway. So that'll be pretty cool once it does. The, may, the big champion this year, the big growth on this guy, uh, has been this chocolate vine. And it has just scrambled right up, right to the top. No flowers this year, so maybe next year we'll get some flowers, and that'll be exciting. Over here in front of the vegetable garden, and it's just spilling over on this side of the fence, which is great. I have this Mexican sunflower, and this has been an awesome performer. And though in front of the vegetable garden, I would like to do a box hedge, this has been such a spectacular performer this year. This has been so awesome that I'm gonna do it again next year. Uh, I'm gonna plant it up, and because it just keeps rocking all year long, you go in, you do some deadheading, it puts on new growth, which is really awesome. There are some Mexican sunflowers growing down here uh, at the other end uh, of the gate. And hopefully they start flowering. They won't get as large, but hopefully they start flowering sometime in the next month. That would be, again, very awesome. Again, late, late season flowers before the frost. Okay, so way down there, that's the metal beds. That's where we started. Now we're in the raised bed section, traditional wooden raised beds, uh, 12 to 18 inches high. Some of them, little, I think one of them is a little shorter. It's only like three or four inches. Either way, uh, let me show you what's cooking in here amongst these eight beds. Now this first bed over here, this was the bed that I did as an experiment to try to grow flowers before transplanting it out into the garden. And I've gotten mixed results, but I have gotten results. So right over here, we've got Ruby Kiss Coreopsis. Now these plants I may dig up, put into pots, and then overwinter them into the green, in the greenhouse, and then plant them out next spring once they start putting on new growth. Here's a Larkspur. So that one was successful. The Red Skin Dahlias, no. But the Lupine Russell, yeah, I got a few out of that, so that's cool. The uh, uh, Prairie Sun Rebecca, I have a bunch. That's actually a little cluster right there. So again, I think I'll put them, pull them out of the ground, put them into pots, and uh, grow them on. Foxglove, no good. Snapdragons, I got some. Shasta Daisy, I got at least one. Nope, two. One down here. So as you can see, it again, mixed results. I planted this bed up really late. I put shade cloth over it for a little while, try to protect it from the summer sun, which kind of turns out wasn't necessary. And I did get some plants out of it. Now the advantage to, to growing uh, flower seeds this way is that I can put more into the bed and I'm not using a lot of plastic pots. This is sort of an old school way probably that they used to do it. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing I've never, re I, I did research it a little bit and it looks like some of the, again, larger garden houses back in the day, uh, you know, houses with large gardens, they would do it this way. You would have the gardeners behind the scenes, out of sight from everyone, growing plants into the beds, uh, nursing beds, seed beds, grow them up that way and then transplant them out into the garden once they got larger and more, uh, you know, more of a root ball and of course, season appropriate. So I think this may be definitely a viable way of going forward in the future for me. And again, use less plastic, use less space in the greenhouse. Why waste space in the greenhouse trying to grow seeds, uh, flower seeds in there when I can obviously either grow them here and then plant them out uh, into the garden when they're ready. Let me show you what else is cooking. Now this is the bed across from the seed bed and these are marigolds. I, I, I wanna say the, the 
The color is Jazzy Red or the variety is Jazzy Red and that one's doing well. These are some Thornburn tomatoes. It was a free tomato from Baker Creek and I don't know if we'll get any tomatoes out of these this year. On the other half of the bed, we have some Walla Walla onions. These onions I had uh, planted from seed, planted them out here, and they've been doing fabulously. In fact, it looks like I have more to uh, harvest here, and I'll put them in the greenhouse, let them dry out for a couple of days, and then my wife can enjoy them in her cooking. In this bed over here, across from that, uh, I planted recently carrots. Yeah, I have a track record with carrots. Carrots don't grow for me, and I don't think this is any exception. These carrots have been in the ground for about seven days, and I don't see the slightest bit of anything growing. So I may replant these with something else, who knows. Uh, still have to get these boxwoods in the ground. Across from that, I have this bush sugar, sugar bush, sugar bush watermelon, bush sugar watermelon, something like that. <laughs> Uh, no fruit that I see yet, but I do see flowers. I don't think I'll get anything before frost, but it is, uh, it, again, it was fun to try to grow this in a raised bed. Interesting experiment to see, you know, how much space would it take up? And it's still growing. Uh, this is just one plant right here, but it's doing well. And maybe if I'm lucky, I get some late, late season watermelon. In the next bed on either end, actually the next two beds, I'm gonna show you. I uh, planted, this is queen lime blush. No, I'm sorry, this is Queen Lime Zinnia. Oh my, Queen Lime Zinnia. And across from it, I have Queen Lime Blush Zinnia. Uh, both of these have been troopers. They've been mass producing all summer long. Planted them up in the spring. They've been crazy. They're still going at it. I can do probably do some more deadheading and they will still come in. One of the things that I do want to do soon is I want to start gathering up seeds. So I do have quite a few. In fact, that one looks like he's ready to go for seed. So I can start gathering up those seeds so that I don't have to purchase any or as much next year. Now, in the rest of the bed, we have this arch. And in the arch here, I have several things growing. So first, let's start off with the loofah. And I start growing loofah up on this one side. And as you can see, I have several loofah fruits. Now I'm gonna let these uh, dry out and then I'll try to make loofah sponges out of them in the fall. So over here on the other side, these, these are done. Um, they're not really producing anything anymore, but this was rattlesnake pole bean. My wife did like the variety. I really didn't like the variety. It has strings and the flavor wasn't all that in a bag of chips. On this side, we've had some Cucumber, and the cucumber's still going, which is great. And then if we come over here, more cucumber. Uh, oop, and I see a fruit right here. Oop, camera focus. There we go, there, there's another. My wife has pulled two or three at least off of this already, so there are still more cucumbers coming and the season's not done yet. In this bed here, we have a whole lot of pretty much dead sunflowers. These were planted earlier in the year. So they'll be coming out soon. And I'm not sure I may try to plant sunflower again or just, yeah, I'll do radishes in this bed, I think. And that'll be uh, good for the winter or the fall, I should say. Here, these were late planted San Vicente hybrid tomatoes. And though they look a little on the ragged side and tired, these have produced quite well for being a late, plant, late season planted tomato. And they're, they're sort of a small cherry, cherry bell tomato here, actually. Here's a couple that haven't ripe, quite right ripened yet, but they won't get much bigger than that. So if I put my thumb next to it, you can get a good size. So it's sort of like a, a cherry tomato, a little larger maybe, but uh, my wife has been loving them and uh, they've been good producers. If we plant them earlier in the spring, we'll probably get a whole lot more from them. So that'll be the game plan next year. In front of them, um, this is Italian basil. Now, Italian basil, I will not grow again unless it's for ornamental purposes because it goes to, it bolts and goes to flower very quickly. Now, I've let these go to flower just because the pollinators do love the flowers. I see bees on them, not right now, but I see other, uh, you know, bugs on them, so which is great. And it provides a little shade for the tomatoes 
because again, with our heat, um, you know, if I provide a little shade to the base of the tomato, you know, it acts almost as like a living mulch and it keeps the um, moisture in the ground from evaporating so quickly. Editing Jay here, I actually forgot one of the raised beds. Let me show you that real quick. This is the bed across from the tomatoes. And though it doesn't look like there's anything here in here now, I have planted carrots and cabbage. Again, fall crops, and let's see if they come up. This bed used to have the um, bush beans in here. I had two different varieties of bush beans. They've all been removed, and now I've planted carrots and cabbage. So let's see if they come up in the fall. Well, there you go. Again, I apologize for the noise. They're doing construction across the street, building a house. Uh, I will try to take as much noise out in the, in the uh, video editing. But there you go. That's the vegetable garden tour. But if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, there are so many projects that still need to be done. I keep saying that in every video. It's sort of like a verbal reminder to myself that I have to do so many things still. I am building a garden here on an acre and a half in Eastern North Carolina, growing zone 8A. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, please leave them below. I'm, I'm always receptive and open. If you guys have any ideas or suggestions, again, for the preserving of herbs, or again, anything else that you've seen here in this uh, ro that vegetable garden tour, <laughs> please leave those comments below. Uh, that's gonna wrap it up for today. I'm gonna catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.